gathering the data for our study is a critical procedure and must be done with utmost care to make certain we get the exact information that we need. The question that we're trying to answer is to obtain information about the entire population that's under study. For example, if we were making some study of the students at Tarrant County College, our entire population would be the entire student body of Tarrant County College. We might want to make that more definite by studying the students at one particular campus, but we must be certain what the entire population is. It is impossible to ask every student who is a student at Tarrant County College a question or a series of questions in a study. Several thousands of students are studying at Tarrant County College and it would be absolutely impossible to question each student. There is a method, however, that can allow us to gather data and be fairly certain of its accuracy that does not have to ask every member of a population. This is called a sample. A sample is a statistically representative group of any particular population. However, the sample we must draw and consider in studying a population is not just a sample, but a random sample. A random sample is taken in such a way as to assure that every person in the population has an equal chance of being the person who answers the question. If we deviate in the slightest way from randomness, we face a very definite possibility of getting the wrong information. <clears throat> the random sample must be gathered in a scientific way. For example, the person who stood in the parking lot and asked the first several students who came by his question for his survey was certainly not doing a random sample. He was getting the persons who came early on that particular day. The person who takes a alphabetical list of people in the population and takes every 100th name or every 150th name would not get a random sample because there are many more Smiths and Martinez's than there are people of other last names. He would get an overabundance of Smiths and Martinez named people. The random sample must be absolutely certain that every person has an equal chance of answering the question or receiving the survey. One way to do this is to number the people in the population and then get a set of random numbers either generated by a computer or a statistic book and pick the names that were generated from that random sample. In this way you can be certain of that. The point of a sample is this. If you do the sample and it's random, then you can believe that whatever percentage is true for your sample will be also true and can be generalized to your entire population. It is not perfect. There is that plus minus 3 percent plus minus 5 percent plus minus 0 0.03, 0 0.05 that says that there could be a mistake here. What that margin of error for figure means is actually this. It's telling us that if we did another hundred samples just like we did the one we did, 0 0.05 means 95 of them mathematically would come out the same as the one we received. 0 0.03 means 97 out of 100 samples done this way would give that information. There are some other kinds of samples. Stratified sample would be such as if you just took the women or just took the men or just took the people on one campus of the college. Snowball or convenience samples is a group of people that are just there and convenient. and You can study them like the students in a certain um, class at a certain college. But what we must try for is a random sample. 
An example of the failure to do a random sample was seen in the election uh, of Harry Truman over Thomas Dewey. All of the surveys, polls that were done, predicted a resounding victory for Republican Thomas Dewey. It was so obvious from the surveys and the polls that Dewey was going to win that uh, some papers printed their front pages before the results were in. But when the results came in, in opposition to what the polls had all said, it was evident that Truman had won the election. Then they began to say, why were the polls incorrect? I'm going to make this a little simpler than it actually is, but uh, the problem was in the survey method in the fact that they did not use a random sample. Briefly, or most simply said, it was something like this. They did their surveys by telephone. At that time, Republicans were more affluent than Democrats. Therefore, more Republicans had telephones than Democrats. This meant that when they did the telephone survey, they just by nature got more Republicans than Democrats, and this pushed their sample completely off. For that reason, the, sample, the poll said Dewey would win. The vote said that Truman won. Any time you make a mistake in your random sample, you face the great possibility, even probability, of being wrong. You cannot generalize from the sample group to the entire population unless you have an absolute random sample. Many sociologists are so careful about this that if they are making a sample by putting the names of people in a hat and taking names out to be the ones that will be in the sample, they put the name of the one selected back in and shake the group before they pick another name so they're picking from the same number of possibilities each time. The important thing is that you are making certain that it's absolutely random. On slide 50, you have uh, some examples of the different kinds of questions that will be answered, uh, be asked on different matters. Look at them real quickly just so that you can understand. We sometimes use closed-ended questions, male or female. People will choose one of the two, and hopefully they will be one of the two. An open-ended question would be like, why do you think marijuana should or should not be legalized? Another way to get that piece of mad pressure would be a Likert scale. The Likert scale would be the statement medical marijuana should be legal in Texas, and people would say strongly agree, agree, not certain, disagree, strongly disagree. You get a little bit of attitude involved in this. If you ask the open-ended question, why do you think marijuana should or should not be legalized, you can operationalize your answers by using coding. For example, you would set up anyone who answered something in regard to marijuana should be used just for medical persons would be coded one. That would mean that would be people who answered in that way. People who mentioned something about tax benefits, we can make a lot of money if we legalized it, would be coded two. People who suggested more control over the substance, less contamination, would be coded three. Answers that mentioned uh, something about less use if there was legalized would be four and some other reason would be five. Then you have a scale one to five that would tell you what people believe about this. Um, the interviews or the surveys or however you get the information, you must find ways to ask the questions that people will answer, and you must get the stratify uh, the random sample so that it will work. Uh, these matters of sample are imperative.